morning or good afternoon, I guess by the time you see this. I hope you all are having a great day. Hey, welcome to another Photography Friday. Um, I want to talk today about the idea of uh, repeating patterns. And um, for those of you in the Central Kansas District, we actually have a theme this year of repeating patterns. So I thought this would be a good time to talk about that. And hopefully some of you will be able to incorporate this into your um, your photography for the county fair or for the district fair, I don't think what it's called. Um, okay, so anyhow, uh, repeating patterns are essentially what happens when you take an element um, in a photo and, and it repeats, okay? So an element of a photo might be something like a kernel of corn you know, by itself, one element. But if you think of repeating patterns, you think about um, more than one kernel, more than one element that keeps repeating over and over and over again. So the corrosive kernel would be the repeating pattern. This also applies to something such as bales of hay um, or, um, you know, Apples at the grocery store, also to picket fences. So you notice how in each of these photographs, there's a pattern that repeats. Now, a couple things to think about when you're talking about um, uh, repeating patterns is sometimes the wide shots, such as the bales at the bottom of the, of the frame here, you know, that's an interesting pattern, but it's not nearly as fun as the picture in the upper left hand corner. You notice the upper left hand corner, it's a repeating pattern, but it's a little bit different in that the bales are stacked in different directions. There's no, um, you know, I mean, you can definitely see between the bales, but there's no, they're not all stacked uniformly or anything like that, yet it's still a repeating pattern. The bottom photo, which is a wide angle shot, I'm assuming it's a different set of bales, it looks like it from here quite frankly, it just isn't very exciting. So even though you shoot something that is a repeating shot or a repeating pattern, make sure that, um, you know, get up close, take a look and see if, if you can do something to change the, the dynamic of the photograph to make it more interesting. Um, an example I read in a, from a photographer named Jeremy Webb, he talked about if you had a line of soldiers lined up, you know, the inclination may be to shoot straight on and you might get 10 soldiers that show, um, you know, all lined up looking the same, same, you know, just a lot of the same thing, basically. And when you look at them and you see military pride, you might, you know, see um, discipline and things like that in the photograph. But it's not going to be very interesting. On the other hand, if you stood at the end of the row, a shot down the row, you would see each soldier as a repeating pattern. Um, and it might be a little more interesting. The same with the bales of hay up here. Um, th the other thing I wanted to mention is repeating patterns are great. They're a great idea. They're, you know, they're, they happen everywhere. They happen in nature. They're man-made, the whole nine yards. But sometimes a repeating pattern just isn't very exciting. So often when you do a repeating pattern, if you can find something that sort of breaks up the pattern, um, that makes the photo more interesting. It actually gives your eyes some place to look. It's sort of like uh, focuses you on one particular element in the photograph. In this case, we have a lot of green apples. Um, you know, we're not really paying attention to any of them, but I guarantee you, when you first look at this photograph, the first thing you looked at was the red apple in the lower third of the photo. So repeating patterns are a great idea. They're very easy to do, but sometimes you just got to break up the pattern a little bit. Years ago, when I was a student at KU, I shot a photograph. I was at a football game, and I shot a photograph of the crowd on the other side, and it was really neat because all it had were people, and it was repeating pattern, except a photograph in the you know in the off center of the photograph was the tunnel that you know people come in and out of to the stadium and i was really proud of the shot and i showed it to my pro photography professor and he said well he said 
it's a pretty good shot of a tunnel, but he said, what else is there? And the point he was making that the repeating pattern is there and that's interesting, but the first thing you're gonna look at is that tunnel because it is different um, than the rest of the photograph. So again, sometimes it helps to break up the repeating pattern. Um, a picket fence is a good example of a repeating pattern. We talked about that. So now I have a, a video for you to watch by a man named Phil Steele of steeltraining.com. Uh, He's a photographer and he talks a lot about finding repeating patterns and what you can do with them. Called Learning to See Creatively. And I'll put a link to it down below this video because I recommend it very highly. So. I got inspired by reading this to go take a walk around my neighborhood. I want to focus on one aspect of the this again. Come take a walk with me. I've been reading a photography book recently called Learning to See Creatively, and I'll put a link to it down below this video because I recommend it very highly. So I got inspired by reading this to go take a walk around my neighborhood, and I want to focus on one aspect of composition. And today I'm just going to focus on patterns. And I'm going to try to resist the urge to shoot anything else. And if you want to come along with me, you're invited. Sometimes things like fences can create interesting patterns, but I don't know if I can get an angle on this one that will make it uh, make much of it. Come up and uh, just do this just for the fun of it. Nah, I'm not sure that's worth much. We can find something better. Walking around the outside of Petco Park, the baseball stadium. I'm sure we'll see something around here. I already have an idea. Gotta look up and down. I think this, this looks like a pattern. So one of the rules of shooting patterns is to fill the frame. So I'm gonna zoom in. Now here's this cool pedestrian footbridge, which I like a lot, but it's really more about shape than it is about pattern. I'm gonna see if I can find any patterns within it. Stairs are always guaranteed to make patterns. So again, I'm gonna try to fill the, fill the frame. That's something of a pattern. All right, now we're up on top of the bridge. I'm just gonna look around and see if I can find any patterns up here. see why I like to live in San Diego. We're going to walk over by the river, which you can see over there in the distance. This is a walk I like to make almost every day. Walking past the front of the Hilton Hotel, Hilton Bayfront. Sometimes a building make a good pattern. So let's see what the Hilton has to offer here. So, uh, I'm just going to zoom in. All right, finally down by the harbor. There's bound to be some things down here. And right away, here's a fence. Sometimes a fence can be interesting. Let's kind of kind of zoom in on it. Now, first, I was thinking about the water, and I'm sure I can get some patterns there. But I also see these these rocks. If I kind of zoom in so that the rocks fill the frame, get a shot of those. The water itself makes very abstract patterns. I'm around behind the convention center. And I just noticed something on the back of the convention center I want to go take a look at. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. Gotta get close enough to fill the frame, get everything else out. We start to get to the boats. This is what they call the super yacht dock for obvious reasons. Now, finally got out 
into the sun. It's a little chilly this morning. It's still pretty early. Probably should have come out a little bit later. Also, some of the things I've been shooting have been entirely in the shade because the sun's not up very high yet. So I may come back a little later on and catch some of these same things in different light. I've been trying to spot something on one of these boats that I could shoot and fill the frame with, but I can't get quite close enough. But maybe I could crop in, you know, like this set of lines. If I could get in really close to those, that might work. Or there's a kind of a grid up here. If I shoot that and crop in, that might work. Ah, uh, now this, this is a pattern. Look at this baby. Zoom in to really emphasize it. Once again, we have stairs on the back of the convention center. And stairs always lend themselves to pattern. I suppose even something like a tree, if I really zoom in, becomes kind of an abstract pattern. Now this is kind of interesting because we got a foreground pattern made by the, this metal parking structure and then a background pattern made by the windows in this hotel. So I think I should be able to get a few shots out of this. This hotel is one of my favorite buildings in all of San Diego. This is the Marriott Marquis. And uh, this was designed by C.W. Kim, my favorite San Diego architect. He built all the great buildings downtown. Now maybe somehow just the mass of these boats, if I zoom way in on them, make some kind of interesting pattern. It's sort of a chaotic pattern. Pattern nonetheless. All right, I think that's enough for this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's do this again soon. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I thought that was very informative. Thanks to Phil Still for um, creating that video. Okay, so th that's pretty much it um, for today. If you have any questions about repeating patterns or about photography in general, you can reach me at my email address is here, or you can text me at the phone number listed. Um, be sure, you know, fair time's coming up. Entries are due, you know, what, a little over a month maybe a month and a half, six weeks, something like that. I would be for sure checking the fair guide and checking with the um, Central Kansas District uh, Facebook page just to keep up to date on what's happening and um, you know any important information you need to know. I hope you all are staying safe. I hope you're getting the chance to go out and do photography. I know it's been rainy, but you know what? That's just another challenge, you know, think about this. You can go out and get some amazing photos when it's raining. Just, you know, be very careful. Don't put yourself in a place where you could get, you know, hit by lightning or something. Okay, well, anyhow, I hope you all have a good day. Let me know if you have any problems or questions or issues or problems that you want to talk about and we can um, certainly work through them. Take care.